that. All right. Let's okay. go. Sunday morning. Here we go. All right. There she is. You ready? I'm ready. Are you Are ready? sure you're ready? Huh? Cause dude, he's alive. He's man. alive, baby. Woo! He's Son alive. Boy. It's been really sad the last few days, but it's really good today. <laughs> incredible. He is up. Yes. Well, it's not sad for us. No, it's not sad for us. Yes. No. But as we're trying to sit there and think about what those days would have been like. Yeah. Sunday is a pretty awesome day. It's a pretty awesome day. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome day. Yeah. When when literally all of your sorrow and all of your sadness is met. With the truth that that he's not in the tomb anymore. Yeah. And and then not only is he not in the tomb, because the thoughts of that, I mean, what happened? Did somebody take him? Yeah. Did somebody are are those religious leaders are they just like, you know, mm -hmm. and then they get a message. Yeah. You know, from an angel, mm -hmm. a, a messenger of God to tell them what's happening. Yeah. I mean, you want to talk about that? That's just crazy. I mean, it's just, I, I, just, I just sit there and I think, and, and not only, I, I can't imagine what that would have been like when Jesus walks in the room, you know, and they, they see him. I have to wonder if there's like, I just, I just can't imagine, man. Like, yeah, am right. I just running? Like, but now I sit there and I think about the ramifications for that moment yes. for us is it's impossible to overstate it, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, because I, I know one thing we were talking about the other day is I sit there and I look at, um, we talked about yesterday how their hope was gone. Gone. How there's no hope. And they had a whole day to sit in. Yeah, and just write and tumultuous said it resting, mm -hmm. right? And but yet when we get to first Peter and he begins to write and says, We have this living hope. Living. Right? right. That the hope that you the hope that once died, right? Right. right. Bro, it's it's alive. It's and alive. then all the things that that means for us um, is just stinking incredible, right? I mean, even the fact that that now I mean because Jesus lives. We're gonna to live too. Yep, yeah, we're gonna to live too. And isn't I mean, isn't that the bottom line? And, and the thing and, is, and then all of the stuff he taught uh -huh. throughout his ministry on earth, boom. Yeah. He he, he told us this. Uh -huh. He taught us this. Yeah. And and I mean, but I, I want to get back one real quick thing yeah, to, to the messenger because uh -huh. you know they went to the tomb. The ladies were they went to the tomb to go you know prepare his body so it wouldn't decay yeah, so yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. And and they they. They get the message that he's alive. Mm -hmm. they, they thought it was stolen. What was it? I'm looking here in Luke 24 mm -hmm. now. And what was it? Uh, and they were frightened. They bowed their faces to the ground. The men said to them, these are the angels. It's the, the best question I ever. Know, it right? says, why do you seek the living among the dead? Yeah. That was their message. Yeah. I mean. What a question. Yeah. 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 I just think I heard one of my professors say one time, and I love this phrase. It's just, man, a resurrected Jesus changes everything. Everything changes everything, right? Yes. Um, I mean, because I, I know we talked a little bit about First Corinthians twelve or fifteen uh, verses twelve through nineteen. And can we just read this? Yes, time? go for it. Yeah. I, I love because I love what Paul does. He basically says, if Jesus Christ did not raise from the dead, yes. here's what's true about us. Yeah, and so, done. and so we know now the inverse of all these things is true. Exactly. So he says, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead. How can some of you say there is no resurrection from the dead? Right. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. Right. And I love this. Yes. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation is in vain, yes. and so is your faith. Which is exactly what yesterday they felt. Yeah. They mm -hmm. felt as though they were embarrassed. It was in, They were to be pitied. Mm -hmm. Oh, somebody feels sorry for me. But now he's like, but he's alive. Yeah. And so then therefore, yeah. there is no pity for you. Yeah, so let, I'll skip, let me just get on to verse 17. So yeah, no it says, if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless and you are still in your sins. Right? Oh. And he says this 19, if we've put our hope in Christ for this life only, we should be pitied more than anyone. That's right. I love that. So that gives, you're listening to this on a Sunday morning, maybe you're riding to church or something. And when you pull in the parking lot and there's hundreds of cars in our parking everywhere. lot. And colors everywhere. Yes, that means that if Jesus is still dead, and every person passing us on the road can look by and feel sorry for us. Exactly. And I love it. It's not even like making fun of us. No, it's, like, it's like, man, that's pathetic. That's pathetic. Yeah. That's, I feel so sad for this man. Yeah. That's exactly right. And so, man, just a resurrected Jesus changes everything. It really does. Which is awesome. Yeah, I love yeah. uh, We didn't talk about this. Yeah. I don't know if I ever told you this story. <laughs> no. But uh, I love, we were at our, uh, our backyard Bible clubs last summer. Yeah. And uh, we're talking about Jesus rising from the dead. And I asked like a six-year-old, right? It's no, no theological degree, no church, whatever. <laughs> And I said, um, I asked him, I said, why do y'all think it's important that Jesus rose from the dead? Why, why is that important? Why does that matter? And he looked at me and said, because I couldn't trust a dead guy. 
That's awesome. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome. But seriously, I mean, it's seriously, though, it's like everything that Jesus said, it does, does it matter? If I mean, he doesn't, it, you know what I'm saying? Because he is alive and he's raised from the dead, everything he said is true. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so then therefore everything, not only everything he said is true, mm -hmm. everything he believed as true is true. Yeah, yeah. And everything he affirmed is affirmative. Yeah. And everything he said that will come, mm -hmm. will come. Yeah. I mean, because, dude, he's alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, therefore, you got a problem with everything Scripture teaches? Mm -hmm. Why would you have any problem with anything Scripture teaches? It's true. Because in him is the reality. And it, I mean, it, it affirms. It's all true. Yeah. So, because he, 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 he did not lie. Yeah. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, you're looking at that. Because one of the things you said, read that Scripture again you said about Paul before. For the last part, I can't remember what verse it is. Uh, yeah. Verse uh, 15, let's see, yeah. maybe 17. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. Okay, you're so, still in your sins. so if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. Mm -hmm. But Christ is raised. So your faith is worth something. Right? That's what I love about that passage. You just flip it, flip right? It. So if Christ has not been raised, we're still it. in our sins. The resurrection flips it. It does. Yeah, he flips the script. Right? Yeah. So awesome. when you feel as though your faith and trust in Jesus is lesser than any other belief system out there. It's like it's a because let me tell you, the, the world will try to make you think that we're back that we're backward hicks because we believe in the risen Jesus. Yeah. And we believe in the truth of scripture. They'll try to make you think that you're not intelligent. They'll make you they'll, they'll want to make you feel like you have no no thing nothing to teach us. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said through his word, your faith is worth yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. It's not worth yeah, which is a good indicator that it's coming from the world mm -hmm. when they want you to feel that your faith is worthless. Yeah, but Jesus has affirmed through the resurrection, bro. Your yours is the only faith. Yeah, and it's awesome. Yeah, and then I, I would say we didn't plan to go here, but if you go back in First Corinthians fifteen, I love where where Paul is writing and says, "Man, this is of utmost importance for you." Big time. That Christ died for our sins. Preach it. Was buried yeah. in the ground. Preach it. And raised again on the third yes. day according to the scriptures. And, preach it. And preach know, it to yourself. Yeah, preach it to yourself. You know, I had a student one time ask me in a, in a Wendy's down in Marshville, North Carolina, in the great state of Marshall. Yeah. And uh, he asked me, he said, he said, what happens when you as a preacher preach every passage in the Bible? And that was a really weird question. You <laughs> know? And I, but I told him, I was like, I said, dude, I said, we just keep preaching the same thing. <laughs> because that that is our message, that Christ died, he was buried, right. that he raised again. That's what it it all keeps going and back that, to that. And that will continue to preach and celebrate for eternity. Because we've been celebrating for 2,000 years, and it's just going to keep on going. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we dig deeper in it. So, yeah. so dig deeper in it. Yes. Pull pull out. It's like pull out everything that you can pull out of this incredible event yeah. to be affirmed that your faith is true and in the right place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's alive. Yeah. And here's the deal. He's alive. He is not dead. He is still alive. Yeah. And he's really not dead. Yeah. So, and I think, too, and, and then wrapping up real quick, I, I think in light of yesterday, too, man, what, what hope does this bring us mm -hmm. that, man, in the midst of suffering, as we were talking about the other day, yeah, suffering yeah. is real. It's real. Suffering's intense. It's real. It happens and it's real and it's there. Yeah. But, oh, man, the hope that we have. Yeah. That, I mean, Jesus suffered. Exactly. But he didn't lose. You know, oh, this he, is crazy. And this yeah. may be too much. And I may completely blow up. Say it. Completely. Look. But the resurrection is so important and so beautiful and so exciting because sin and death is so hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sin and death set an incredible frame mm -hmm. for the beautiful picture of resurrection. Dude, that's a cool way to say it. So how can, how can you look at that oh, and so, go, God? So sin and death set an set incredible, incredible frame, frame for the beautiful picture of the resurrection. Oh, that's so good. I mean, think about that, that's dude. That's so good. How, because how, in our mind, we'll think sin's so horrible. Death is so terrible. God's like, it was not. That's, we got to end there because that was awesome. Now, here's what's cool. We got a Monday podcast, too. And you might be wondering, like, whoa, Easter's over. No, no it's not, baby. So come back come and back. Listen, listen tomorrow. All right, we got to say, we got to end on that, though. Okay. Sin and death. Sin and death is an incredible picture frame for the beautiful picture of the resurrection. Oh, that's so good. That's oh, so good. So, so good. rejoice in that today, yes. man. Get up because he's alive. Amen.